dash cam tips and using the Rove dash cam. The mission. I got dash cams to protect my family and to have proof in case anything happens. Over time, that grew to me wanting to record all the dumbasses on the road doing stupid stuff, as well as obviously people doing really dangerous things. I wanted to have clear, undeniable proof in case something happens. And I wanted to easily be able to take that footage and report it to law enforcement or my insurance company if needed. What dash cams do I use? So in the beginning, I started using um, a very cheap dash cam. I had a front and a back dash cam, and I recorded a number of incidents using that dash cam, but really after some time and reviewing the footage, the footage was really mostly unusable. Around that time, I got my first Tesla, and um, in the beginning, obviously Tesla has eight, eight cameras that are recording, but at that time, you could not actually get the recordings from your Tesla, so I still used my old dash cam in the Tesla. Then in 2018, Tesla allowed, allowed you to use a USB thumb drive. And if that was plugged in, it would record from some of the Tesla dash cams. In the beginning, it would record just from the front dash cam. Then it started including the back. And now it includes the front, the back, the left and the right camera. The Tesla dash cams were amazing, um, but they're not really designed for to be used as dash cams. They're really cameras that are set up at angles and positions to be used for self-driving. I really wanted to make sure that I got people's license plates, that I got people's faces, uh, that I got details of the car, and the Tesla cams proved that they couldn't always get that. Also, the built-in Tesla cameras are fairly low resolution. So at night or at speeds, I didn't always capture the details that I wanted to get. The details I wanted of the offenses I was recording were faces and license plates. Other than the front dash cam on the Tesla, the other cameras are really too low to get people's faces and what they're doing inside their cars, so it didn't really meet my requirements. My 2017 Tesla, the recordings are really poor quality. I don't know if the cameras are different, but certainly the output quality, uh, the computer seems to be struggling and sometimes the footage, footage is jumpy or, and not really that clear. My 2020 Tesla definitely has much better clarity uh, than the first one, but still not ideal. I did a ton of research on dash cams and went through a bunch of dash cams that I sent back. And eventually I settled on the, on the road dash cam. I needed six dash cams, three for every car. I added a front, front, left and right camera. And eventually I'll add a back camera to each car as well. I went with the road cam because it was just a great value proposition. Uh, the cheaper cams just weren't great. The expensive cams weren't that much better. I felt like the Rove 4K, 4K camera really was a reasonable price point and the quality was pretty good. The higher end cameras really, I didn't get any gain from you know spending an extra $200. So uh, some of them were pretty uh, form factors, but I didn't really care about that. Um, some tips when setting up your dash cam, I'll go through a bunch of things that are important, but um, getting the position set up correctly, the angles and the height is really important. Try to get the dash cams up as high as possible. Uh, that way you're looking down, you're getting everything. Um, mine are high up in my model, in a Model X, so I can actually look down into people's cars, see if they're on their phones. I can also see trucks sometimes. Trucks are really difficult to get, but um, I can even get some trucks because the cameras are set up so high. Um, also setting up the camera angles is really important. The side cameras I actually place facing slightly backwards. That way when someone's pulling up next to me, I can actually get, um, I'm looking down and into, like in, into their car um, and I can get, I find that's the best angle for getting people's faces and getting people on their phones. The only thing is with that angle is if someone doesn't have a license plate on the front of their car, it actually lands up being very difficult to get their rear license plate. Um, so usually what I'm landing up doing is I'm taking uh, the video, I'm saving the video from the front camera and the, the side camera so that I can get the plate and the person doing the action that they shouldn't be doing. All that, almost all dash cams have this feature. When you see an incident, make sure you click the save button. Almost all dash cams have a save button. Um, this will basically take the last couple minutes of your video and put it in a read only folder so that that file cannot be overwritten. So when the SD card runs out of space, and it loops back to write over the older content. Your content that you wanted, that you wanted to be recorded, is saved and protected and not going to be overwritten. I always use the biggest SD cards that I can. That way I don't have to worry about them filling up too quickly. 
and I also label the SD cards. I have a little um, label. I have a little label printer, and I'll actually print little uh, C, L, R, and B center, left, right, and back. That way, I can actually um, know which which SD card came from which car. So, so that way, when I'm done downloading the footage, I can easily organize the files uh, as I want them. The other thing is really be safe. When I have a passenger, I get them to press the button. I try not to fiddle with anything really when I'm driving. It's not always possible, but if you have a passenger, have them click the button. And the whole point of this endeavor is to make the roads a safer place. Don't become the reason that people are endangered because you're doing things with that with your dash cams. Make sure you set up your dash cams before time, test them beforehand. That way you're not having to do any adjustments while you're actually driving. Another really important feature is turning the sound recording on in your dash cams. Uh, in the beginning, I was a little you know, concerned. I didn't want recording my voice and my private conversations, but I found having the recording on really useful for a couple of reasons. First of all, when I click the record button, it makes a beeping sound. That means when I'm scrubbing through the video and looking for the incident, especially because I have so many videos, um, I'm easy, easily able to hear the beep, go back a few seconds and usually find that incident really quickly. Um, also, when you click the button on the dash cam, it will it shakes the dash cam a little bit so also when i'm scrubbing through i can see when the camera shakes a little bit and that also is a good indicator for me that the incident happened a few seconds before having the audio on has a few additional benefits um, not only do you get the beep from clicking the button but i also try to read the car make model manufacture what the incident was and the license plate that way if the camera actually doesn't capture the license plate for some reason because of poor lighting or it's dark you can at least know that you've got the license plate and record it. Spend some time, get to know your cameras really well. I definitely recommend taking some of the footage and reviewing it. It's kind of like having a backup to your computer and then your computer crashes and you try to get the backup and the backups are inaccessible. It's exactly the same with your dash cam footage. So definitely, even if you don't see any incidents, record a couple of incidents or record a couple of things that you're going to remember and go back and review them and make sure that what you thought you were getting, you're actually getting. So test and verify what you are recording. So right now I have um, 11 dash cams in my car, the eight from the Tesla and the three Rove cams, and I do plan to add a back camera soon. Editing the videos. When I first used my cheap dash cam, I found about 90% of my videos were unusable, which was very frustrating after collecting videos for some time and then going to sit down and edit, the, edit them. When I updated, upgraded to my 4K road dash cam, uh, I found that 90% of my videos were usable. Um, there was still a little bit of a learning curve when I initially downloaded the videos from the SD card. I was actually originally a little disappointed. I was viewing the videos in Media Player, in Windows Media Player, and VLC Player. Um, I contacted Rove Support, and I felt like I wasn't being able to pull the license plates. Um, this was probably to some degree because of the limited capabilities of these players and also the resolution of your screen. I ended up pulling the footage into Adobe Premiere and now I use DaVinci Resolve and I'm able to enhance the footage as well as zoom in and now I'm really able to grab a lot more detail and license plates than I previously believed I was able to get from that footage. So make sure you're using a good piece of software when you're actually reviewing and editing your, your, your footage. You might have things that you can't really see in the player or on your phone but that actually are usable when using a good piece of video editing software. Uh, the biggest issues that I still have with the camera, to be honest, are bad light, dusk and dawn conditions are not really great. Generally cloudy conditions are actually pretty good because it's bright, but it's not too bright. Too much brightness is definitely also too reflective on license plates and I haven't been able to get license plates or people's faces because of reflections on windows. And nighttime has also been an issue. So usually whenever I'm driving, I know my camera well enough now that if I'm in any of those conditions and I feel like any of those conditions are going to impact the videos, I will read out the license plate. Also having 4K footage really helps. It gives you more ability to be able to crop a specific area of, of the frame and, um, and zoom in, zoom in or crop a specific area of the frame. So uh, having that 4K has really helped me also get footage. There is a fisheye lens on the Rove cam, so you actually do get quite a wide, wide field uh, of view. There are cases where I've only got like a sliver angle of, uh, of a license plate and it's still usable because the footage is so clear. So a quick summary, when you're out there and you're using your dash cam, make sure you're being safe. Make sure you know your dash cam well. Don't confront people, don't get any altercations. Contact 
law enforcement or your insurance companies deal with it through the proper channels. I do highly suggest getting as many cameras as you can. Uh, front and back is great, but having those side ones has really helped me out a lot as well. Make sure you have the uh, bump detection on as well. So if someone bumps you when you cross park, the camera will turn on and actually record and you might get the person who did a hit and run driving away. Turn on the sound and make sure you read license plates uh, if you can see them clearly. That way, if your camera misses them, you've got a license plate to report. Happy hunting and report what you see on Citizen PD.